Hello guys and welcome to another David Simulata. In today's video I'm working on a customer's van. This is a 2010 Mercedes Sprinter van. It is a badge that's Freightliner. Let me show you what I'm doing. I have a huge list of things to be done and some things are not even on this list. Um, this is a short list that my client put. upon observation there was a lot more and uh, certain things uh, we didn't actually talk about like this u-joint on drive shaft which is non-serviceable u-joints on the drive shaft um, we also got a radial not working fuse um, but anyways let's take a look at the actual problem at hand besides this list <clears throat> I already know everything that's going on with this vehicle and uh, repairing it is going to take a lot of observation and just doing a step by step so if you have a sprinter van that is sluggish on takeoff like this one well there can't be a better candidate for a video than this van to be honest with you because this van had 20 codes um, upon me first driving it and I deleted all of them and it's not letting me delete six more codes despite how much I'm trying to delete them. So basically, what is wrong with this van at this point? Well, it starts up fine, but when you start driving it and getting out on the road, it barely accelerates to 30 miles an hour, which I will show you. And some of the codes that I'm getting is I'm getting everything from mass airflow sensor, which is right here. I'm getting the EGR code, which is right here. I'm getting the uh, intake throw valve codes, which are like right there on both sides. Um, also, the fuel filter has never been replaced. There is a good chance uh, there is a fuel problem. Um, also, uh, the turbo, which is back there, that's basically deactivated and it's uh, not doing its thing the way it needs to be doing. Um, the vehicle is acting as if it cannot breathe, so it is in limp mode. Like it's driving actually a lot worse than turbo limp mode. Like if it was just a turbo alone, we could have at least accelerated very slowly to 60 miles an hour. Like in this van, trying to get up to 30, it's like, wow, you know, just really hard to do. So also, this is the vehicle with the DEF system on here. Um, DEF system might be okay, but the EGR is not. Here's the EGR. Um, I'm really sorry for all the noise folks I have a particular filter underneath which I haven't looked if this could be serviced or not technically <clears throat> the customer would like it you know to get it cleaned um, or replaced so I think we can actually work on getting it clean um, I have a couple ways of doing it but that's not gonna be the primary focus also we have an issue with the brakes um, the brakes are not that good so we're gonna have to work on those. Um, we're gonna have to replace all the fluids like engine oil, transmission fluid. We got rear differential fluid. <clears throat> we're gonna replace uh, the radiator fluid. We're gonna replace all the pulleys. Um, I was told that the belt was replaced. We're not sure which belt. I could see the little belt here. That possibly was the one that's replaced because I could see the lettering on it. Uh, that other one next to it, uh, it's got a bunch of lines. It looks like an old belt. So I'm going to have to let my client know if, if he wants that back in there. That's fine. Also, we have another issue. There's uh, some kind of oil leak that is happening. And there's a lot of oil back here. And it does uh, drip some oil. Um, I'm going to have to monitor where it's dripping from. Uh, of course, uh, with, my, uh, with my ground here, you can't really tell what's going on. Especially it has rained uh, just now. So what is the plans uh, for this vehicle because look we got a lot of things going on well at this point um, my client he's ordering all the parts for it because I went ahead and I asked him you know go ahead and get the cabin air filter go ahead and get the fuel filter you know get all the filters like an oil filter get the EGR um, you know go ahead and get the cabin filter the transmission filter and you know stuff like that and he's actually getting that thing you know that stuff ordered and plus all the fluids um, as we're gonna go along so what I'm 
hoping for that I could actually catch the problems uh, with this van that, you know, perhaps if we're lucky enough, we're not gonna have to deal with the swirl walls, but um, you know, if there is a way for me to figure it out and not have to deal with it, which is probably gonna be, you know, nearly impossible, but you never know why a vehicle is doing, you know, a particular thing. By the way, I've just loosened all these things. Uh, you know, I had to remove this to, to basically get the, get the proper fuel filter um, and stuff like that for the, for the client. So I was letting him know. But I've installed everything back. And what I want to do is I'm, I'm going to go ahead and um, diagnose this vehicle a little bit more. And little by little, we're going to start getting everything replaced on here. So what I would like to do, the very first thing I would like to do is start with the basics. If I would have the air filter, the air filter would be going in there first. If I would have the EGR right now, EGR would be going in there first. If I had the fuel filter, it would be going in there first. At least some of these things. Also, I do need to observe if there's any leakage in any kind of pipes here. Um, we might have a big leak. We might. We don't know that, uh, but that's um, observation. That's what observation is for. Uh, we obviously do have an oil leak. I'm not sure how serious it is or where it's coming from. So we're gonna have to uh, hunt it down. But the very first thing you wanna do when you're diagnosing your vehicle is, you know, start with the basics. And if you will be replacing some stuff, like this vehicle has um, not been serviced in 100,000 miles, maybe more, uh, because 100,000 is a very long time. Uh, and that includes an oil change, like it hasn't been done. So I'm not really even sure what the uh, oil level is on this thing, if somebody's been adding oil to it or what. So that remains to be seen. But anyways, let's go ahead and begin. The very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get this thing started. And lots of, lots of keys here. So we're going to get this vehicle started. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay. All right, as you can see, it has started just fine. The check engine light is on. So I'll make sure the windshield wipers are off. Let's go take a look at it. See if we could hear anything, smell anything, observe anything. We're just gonna listen, guys. As far as the way it's running, it sounds okay to me. I do hear a little ticking over here. Like tick, 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 tick. That sounds a little bit out of the ordinary. I know it's very hard to tell, but it is there. So we're gonna go ahead and actually uh, warm this vehicle up. Uh, but while we're actually warming it up, let's go ahead and actually take a look at this list one more time. So I'm gonna make a bigger list uh, with everything that's gonna be pointed out, every single little thing, um, and then, you know, we're gonna go from there. Um, gonna make one that's gonna be typed up uh, for the customer uh, as well as for me, so that we could uh, check things off as we go along and so that I actually know what to charge for every little job that we do on this vehicle uh, according to um, the labor per hour or per every labor hour, you know, that's how you call it. But I do charge $100 an hour uh, to do this and $150 for diagnostics. It's just a like regular diagnostics that, I'm, that I do. That's plugging in the computer and just like diagnosing and just, you know, scanning the computer like that regular diagnostics. But I will have to actually diagnose this thing, you know, going a little bit deeper, which I will charge per hour as I'm actually diagnosing. Um, but 
that's not important right now i'm actually not even keeping track of this here that i'm actually um talking to you guys on this so um here's what we need to do replace the fuel filter clean dpf filter uh or delete it says not delete but <laughs> I'm not even sure if you could really delete it on a 2000 tons, to be honest with you. Um, if this is a South Carolina vehicle, it can be done, but you know, being that it has a DEF filter here, uh, I'm not really sure, but if there is clamps to remove the DPF filter, I will actually do that just to see what's gonna happen, um, see if the drivability improves and see what my customer wants to do. If he wants to leave it off and just put a straight pipe in there, uh, see if we could actually clean the original DPF filter because uh, there is ways of cleaning it. So we may have to end up doing it. So right now it is not top priority. Uh, top priority right now would be, man, just to get this thing at least above 30 miles an hour, you know, and then trying to get rid of these limp modes because currently it's not doing too well. So customer has here, it says it's sluggish on takeoff. There is obviously a limp mode, that's what he wrote. Oil leak, U-joint on drive shaft. Brake lights in the back are out, we're gonna check those out. Radio is not working. Um, roaring sound in the front wheels. Uh, so it might be like a wheel bearing, so we may have to do wheel bearings on this. Actually, I would recommend doing wheel bearings. It's uh, 500,000 miles on this thing, this is no small feat. Uh, customer wants to take this vehicle for expedite and if you're gonna be doing expedite you want to make sure that wheel bearings are solid all your pulleys you know your belts and stuff like that make sure you have a good GR on there you got a good fuel filter on there good good filters all around and just make sure it's serviced before you go because you know these are some of the basics that way you don't actually get stranded out there some of the other things I would do of course Make sure I have a spare alternator with me. Make sure I have a spare starter with me. If you could have some other spares with you, that would be great because any one of those things go out, you could be, you know, really down for days, days on end until you actually get those parts in order and, you know, have them installed. So there is no temperature gauge on this vehicle. There is no controls on the steering wheel to find out what those temperature gauges are. So that makes it very difficult for me to tell if this vehicle is even warmed up or not, but it's been long enough. So we're gonna go ahead and actually rev it a little bit. So this is all we really need to do at this point as far as the revving goes. What I wanted to do is see how, where does the RPM gauge goes. It only goes to 3000 RPMs, that's it. It is a typical, typical limp mode. So now, um, the actual diagnostics, you know, it basically begins. I'm gonna have to do, you know, every little thing, you know, step by step um, until we get to the bigger stuff. So it's a process of elimination, um, if you could call it that. So um, what I wanna do now is I wanna do a deeper scan um, using my iCarSoft and see if on that deeper scan, if it's gonna tell me anything else um, and if I could delete the codes. So for that, we're gonna go ahead and shut the vehicle down. And I'm gonna go ahead and get my iCarSoft and start working. My name is Serge Zamaleta. I'm 37 years old. And yes, I experienced success after buying my first home for cash. Back in 2011, I was broke, but I learned to solve problems on my own. Now I'm helping others to solve their problems. I know what pitfalls to avoid to stay profitable in business. Need motivation to be more successful in your life? Do you have Sprinter expedite their business problems? Then subscribe. Let's find creative solutions to your problems. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of my helpful videos.